So we've unearthed some pretty rare finds over the years. Ancient Bibles, missing DNA humanoid skulls, and of course, a rare mint condition Charizard once in a while, if we're lucky. Welcome back to Bumblebee, I'm your host, Kyle McWatters. If you like unearthing history, then you're gonna love this. Here's the top 10 disturbing archeological discoveries that will haunt your dreams. Number 10, Serpent Mound. The Great Serpent Mound is a 1400 foot long, three foot high prehistoric effigy located in Peebles, Ohio, United States. Serpent Mound was first reported via surveyors Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis and was featured in their Ancient Monuments of Mississippi book back in 1848. Looks just like a regular golf course, doesn't it? But underneath, it's perfectly placed and well-preserved earth formations that were made by hand to align with something in the sky. The mound is the largest serpent effigy in the world. Yeah, big snake. The mound itself winds back and forth for more than 800 feet with its tail coiling in seven different areas. Tons of Clovis era spearhead have been found that indicate interaction with other groups of ancient humans, along with the Denisovans and the Neanderthals. Archaeologists believe that the mound's creation was influenced by two astronomical events. The light from the supernova Crab Nebula in 1054 and Halley's Comet in 1066. The mound is also located on an ancient meteorite impact location, which makes things absolutely way scarier. In 2003, geologists from Ohio State University and Glasgow said the meteorite impact origin of the structure at Serpent Mound is the best evidence for its build and importance. Yeah, nothing crazy, just a mile long, cosmically aligned serpent made out of rocks, made from prehistoric dudes who could barely work fire right on top of a huge impact location. Yeah. Something's fishy here. Number nine, the Terracotta Army. Hey, if you dig what we do here on Bumblebee, make sure you hit us up with a like button or comment down below which discovery in ancient history has you laying awake at night. I know mine. Let me know, I'll check it out. The Terracotta Army, don't even get me started, was first discovered in 1974 by a group of farmers east of the Queen Emperor's Tomb Mound at Mount Lee. For centuries, reports mentioned pieces of the terracotta fragments found, roofing tiles, bits of brick, masonry, but when they discovered heads of clay bodies, yeah, the Chinese archeologists started to investigate and dig a little bit deeper. To this day, it remains the largest pottery group ever found on Earth. The Terracotta Army is a collection of sculptures depicting the armies of the Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China. Apparently a form of funerary art buried with the emperor around 209 BCE with the purpose of protecting him in the afterlife. 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, 520 horses, and 150 cavalry. Yeah. That's a lot of protection. The site is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has been since 1987. I'm just getting Medusa vibes when I look at this, you know? Like I'm not convinced the actual purpose of this operation. Like was it a front? Were they once alive? Who knows, dude? This place is mysterious but cool. Number eight, the Antikythera Mechanism. The Antikythera Mechanism is an anomaly ancient computer that uses the cosmos to predict astronomical events. A group of sea sponge divers discovered the Antikythera shipwreck in early 1900, just off the island in Greece. Hence, the name. I find it funny that divers diving for something you wipe your butt with found an ancient computer just chilling down there. Something about that makes me laugh. Many think it's cursed too due to its first handlings. Apparently after its discovery, three of the divers who dove down died shortly after its find. 150 feet deep just off Point Glyphadia, the team retrieved millions in worth of bronze, marble, pottery, glassware, jewelry, coins, and of course, this ancient MacBook. This device is made entirely out of a single bronze sheet built within a wooden case about the size of a shoebox. Faces and cogs covered in Greek inscriptions indicating the device's astronomical calendar, purpose, use, basically everything we have in our iPhone right now within this wooden box 2,200 years ago. Yeah, again, collecting sea sponges to wipe our butts with and then just stumbling upon a computer. I don't know. Someone's getting a raise. I'll say that. Number seven, the Codex Gigas. Basically translates to giant book. Codex Gigas. And it's giant. 170 pounds. It's the largest medieval manuscript in the world. Also known as the Devil's Bible. Yeah, due to the highly detailed full page portrait of Satan himself, the demonology written within, and the legend around its initial creation. Made out of 180 donkeys, the famous myth is that a scribe traded his soul to the Prince of Darkness so that he could complete and master the contents of the universe written within this one book, comprised in only one night. Created in the early 13th century in the Benedictine Monastery of Bohemia, now modern day Czech Republic, this book's creepy. 
Yeah, it contains the complete Bible, like the Old One and the New Testament, as well as everything medicinal and cosmological that a human would know at Earth at that time. All written in Latin, and of course, predated glyphs, and of course, missing the last 10 pages of the book. Yep, ripped out and missing. I don't know. Who knows? The book lays in the National Library of Sweden in Stockholm. I wouldn't go near it. I wouldn't read it. I wouldn't even touch it. You know, I'm good with goosebumps. That scares me enough. Number six, the oldest map. A 4,000 year old stone slab first discovered over a century ago in France may be the oldest known map in Europe, according to a new study. The slab dates back to the early Bronze Age, 4,000 years ago. It was first discovered in 1900 in a prehistoric burial site in Finisterre, France. The engravings on the broken stone appear to resemble topographical features including hills, reference points, and river networks. The broken slab, which is four meters long, was moved to a private museum in France in 1924. It was then stored in a French castle where it gathered dust until it was rediscovered in the castle cellar in 2014. But only recently are researchers beginning to understand the actual importance behind this prehistoric slab rock. It's been interpreted as the oldest cartographical map in Europe. Yeah, that's old. Number five, the Voynich Manuscript. There's a giant Italian Renaissance folio called the Voynich manuscript. It's named after Wilfred Voynich, a book dealer who purchased it in 1912, and to this day, we don't really know what it is. Hands down, the most mysterious book of all time. Not only is it detailed so carefully and patiently, it's basically like a Tim Burton take on a book about life, with an entire world drawn and recorded that isn't ours. Like, parallel universe type stuff. Even the language is unknown. Like, unknown unknown. Like, predates Latin and doesn't use phonetic patterns and coding. The riddle of all riddles. Written somewhere between 14 1905 and 1450, all 240 pages are inscribed in some sort of indecipherable language of about 170,000 characters. Historians and cartographers have tried to crack the code for hundreds of years, yet not one has been successful. Why wasn't this a national treasure movie? I feel like this would have been perfect, like Nicolas Cage, you know? I don't know. Number four, the Nazca Lines. The ancient, very mysterious geoglyphs that make up the soil of the Nazca Desert in southern Peru is an old one. They were created, we think, somewhere between 1000 BCE and 500 AD. Basically, people would make impressions or shallow incisions on the desert floor, removing pebbles, leaving colored dirt exposed, drawing some sort of depictions of fauna and humanoid scribbles for only those above Earth to visually See. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that these are giant, ancient, unknown drawings you can only accurately depict from space or from like drones hundreds of miles in the air. In the years leading up to 2020, between 80 and 100 new figures have been found with the use of drones and cameras since at least year 1900. Yo, who's drawing these things? And why is the mountain range so perfectly square and flat like it's been laser cut to draw on? More than 70 designs are zoomorphic, including birds, spiders, fish, lizards, and of course, humans. Lots of different shapes and clothing and builds of humans. Interesting. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. Yeah, I'd like to think so. I feel like this is going to be on Art Attack. Number three, the mother of dragons. Mary Anning was an English fossil collector, dealer, and paleontologist who became famously known around the world for her discoveries in Jurassic marine fossil beds in the cliffs along the English Channel at Lyme Regis in southwest England. I'm not talking about finding a tooth or something. She found three species of dinosaurs. Like, three different species of dinosaur. Anning's findings contributed to a massive scientific research, pushing prehistoric academia towards the future. In 1811, when Mary was only 12, she found a bizarre fossilized skull. Mary then searched for and dug the outline of its 5.2 meter long skeleton, and by the time she was done, everyone in the town knew that she had discovered something important. Scientists thought this was some sort of ancient crocodile. People were puzzled. Ten years later, she discovers a completely new skeleton of plesiosaur. Two years later, she found one with wings. Today, the Natural History Museum in London and showcases several of Mary Anning's historic finds, including her ichthyosaurus, plesiosaur, and pterosaur. Dude, there needs to be like at least three movies about her on Netflix, no? Like Jurassic Park, England. Number two, Gobekli Tepe. This mysterious ancient site in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey is dated between 1000 and 12,000 BCE. The site comprises of a number of large man-made structures supported by massive stone megalithic pillars. Gobekli Tepe, or known simply as Potbelly Hill, is the oldest place of which megaliths were mounted. The oldest. Like 
ever, and most confusing. Pillars richly decorated with promorphic details, clothing, wild animals, fauna, star systems. Archaeologists are puzzled, to say the least. Famous German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt views Gobekli Tepe as a Stone Age sanctuary. Radiocarbon dating indicates that it contains the oldest known ruins that holster butchered bones of not only deer, but pigs, birds, geese, fish. They've been identified as cooked food, prepared for large groups as festivals or feasts. Yeah, they don't really know exactly what this place was used for, but after finding all this academia and scientific knowledge, it's certain that this place was used by scholars of high order to either teach or study the skills of masonry, as well as the cosmos. And it's only been about a tenth discovered so far. Yeah, just about one tenth. Who knows what other secrets Quebecly Tepe has to unveil? Let's get those other nine tenths uh, undug, no? And the number one spot, ancient Greek shipwreck. The oldest ancient Greek shipwreck ever discovered in the Black Sea, and you would never guess by looking at it. This ship is from 400 BC. It's an ancient Greek trading vessel. Not huge, but somehow, this ship has been kept in almost perfect condition for over 2,400 years, a mile below the sea surface. The lack of oxygen actually preserved the ship, and that's why it looked like it sank last year, not thousands of years. Years ago. John Adams, principal investigator with the Black Sea Archaeology Project, describes the finding as something he never thought was even possible, let alone something he'd witnessed with his own eyes in his lifetime. This discovery changed what we know about ships in the ancient world. It is to date the oldest intact shipwreck ever known to mankind. It can't be beat. This thing is older than most curses. I say pull it up, slap some paint on her, or get her going again, no? Quality versus quantity back then? Things were just built to last back then. History. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that video. I've been Kyle McWaters. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee.